Well, guys, thank you so very much for being with me for this session on active learning with Google tools. Um, as with all the other sessions, just going to do a little bit of housekeeping at first to make sure everybody can follow along. This is a very active session, so I want to make sure you can do all the things we're going to be talking about here. So there is a bit.ly link, uh, as usual. Uh, in this case, it's bit.ly slash Kurtz active. That'll get you to the Google document that goes along with this session. Uh, that document looks like this. So if you're getting into a document that says active learning with Google tools at the top, uh, that is the one you want to be in. Uh, that document has all of the resources we're going to be looking at, including several examples that we're going to be trying out here together um, in, in the time that we have together. Awesome. All of that stuff can be found at bit.ly slash slash Kurtz dash active. Again, when you get to that document at the top, you'll find all of my contact info. Please connect with me in whatever way works best for you. Um, and you are certainly welcome to make a copy of anything I'm sharing here today. Uh, I, I release everything under a Creative Commons license, meaning you're allowed to copy, adapt, and use. All I ask is that you leave a, a link back to where you got it from and that you don't charge for it as well. Uh, so when you get this document pulled up again, feel free to bookmark it or add it to your drive or make a copy, whatever works best for you. All right. So what are we doing in this session? What is this session all about? Well, as you heard in the introduction, this is a session about edu protocols. Um, and so we're going to start by talking about, well, what is that? What, what is an edu protocol? Um, and then we're going to try to do some examples. And I, I'm not sure how many we'll get through in the time we have. My gut feeling is probably two. We'll probably be able to do two of these and maybe just describe a third. My plan would be to do a sketch and tell, to do, to do a tier list. And if we have time, we might be able to touch on the Iron Chef Edu protocol. We'll just have to see how the time goes. But that is the plan uh, for what we're going to be doing here today. So I guess the first thing to talk about is what are Edu protocols? Um, and really, uh, probably the best place to start is to tell you how I got into <laughs> Edu protocols. So I've heard about these for years. So many of my good ed tech friends are uh, folks who uh, use Edu protocols, or they teach about Edu protocols, or they've written books about Edu protocols. Um, and so for years, I was like, okay, this sounds like a really cool thing, but I had not taken the time to really dive into it. Well sometime in the last year, I had a request from a school to come in and do some training where they said, we're really looking for some training that's going to emphasize getting the students active, that the principals are walking around, they're looking in classrooms, and yeah, every student has a laptop, every student's got a Chromebook, every student's on their technology, but they don't seem to be interacting with others. They don't seem to be engaged and active. It seems more passive. What can we do to uh, ramp up some activity here? And so I thought, huh, this sounds like edu protocols. <laughs> and so that's when I said, okay, I'm going to dive into this. And I did, and I was floored. I absolutely loved it. And as I've shared this now many times, I've always been so encouraged by how this engages students. So let's talk about what this is all about. So what is an edu protocol? Basically, all it is, is a framework for a learning activity that can be done typically in a short amount of time, can be done typically with any grade level or subject area, and can typically be done over and over and over again throughout the school year. Take, for example, something as simple as a Venn diagram. When you think of a Venn diagram, you know, it's been around forever. You know, what grade level is that designed for? Well, any grade level, any grade level can use a Venn diagram. Uh, what subject is it for? Well, any subject could use that. How many times can you keep using it to master content? Over and over and over again. That's the idea. It's a tool that we can plug our own content into to help engage students in the learning process. Now, that's basically the idea behind Edu protocols. And so what they've done is they've taken things that are tried and true solid learning activities, and they've put a little twist on them. They formalized them. And so, for example, if you have ever used a KWL, you know, what I want to know, uh, what, I, what I know, what I've learned, uh, that 
is called thin slides in uh, in, uh, in the edge protocol world. Uh, if you've done uh, think pair share, that's a cyber sandwich. If you've done jigsaw method to divide up content among students so they learn pieces and then they teach back to the rest of the class, that's Iron Chef, for example. So the idea is to take tried and true, good, solid uh, activities that engage students add a little tech to them most of the time, uh, formalize them, make them a little fun, and boom, there you go. You've got an edge of protocol. Uh, they do absolutely emphasize the four Cs. We're trying to get students active. We want them making something, thinking critically, communicating, collaborating. It is a bit of a remix. So instead of we teach something, they do work, and then they get feedback, Typically, a lot of times, it's just you hit the ground running. It's work right away. The students start doing the work, and then we give them feedback throughout the process, and then we include the direct instruction, and then we repeat over and over and over again. But it's way more student-driven. The students are much more active. What's that phrase? Whoever's doing the most work in the classroom is doing the most learning. Well, we want our students doing the work, not just us as teachers doing all of the work in the classroom. This also helps deal a lot with the concern about forgetting, like you see something once, you do well, but then it fades over time. The idea of doing uh, these, these routines over and over and over and over again to help cut down on forgetting. All right, so that's the big picture of what Edge of Protocols are. You can learn a whole lot more at their website, edgeofprotocols.com. they got a really good Facebook group. I would encourage you to join that if you want to learn more about it. Uh, if you go down to the section on general resources, there's the link to the Facebook group. That's a great place to start. Everybody in there is so friendly. They can answer questions. You can say, hey, what's a good place to start? I teach this grade, this level, this topic. How can I begin? There are loads and loads and loads. This is just a small example of some of the edge of protocols that are out there. Again, we're going to pull out just a couple of them to use as examples here today. All right. So that's the plan. Let's go ahead now and we're going to shift into doing this. Let's let's get hands on here. So what we're doing is we're going to do a sketch and tell, uh, a tier list. And I don't know if we'll have time for the Iron Chef, but we'll see if we get to that, we will. Now, right away, I'm going to let you know, this is going to be a little bit uh, less representative of how you would normally be doing this because we're not all in a room together. <laughs> so normally I'm thinking of edge protocols with I'm in a classroom with 25, 30 students and we can interact face to face. It's going to be a little different today. So heads up, some of the steps we're going to cut and some of the stuff I'll just say, well, here's where you would normally do blah, 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 because we can't really do that so much since we are all here virtually, but we're going to try our best. All right. So with all those caveats in mind, let's go ahead and get on into this. All right. So the first one we're going to do is called sketch and tell. And so uh, here's how this activity is meant to work. So basically, what this is about is that students are trying to, de to develop an understanding or to uh, improve their summarization skills. It could be either way. And the way it works is you are giving them a prompt just to start with. So it could be a question or it could be a text. You could say, you're going to take a minute or you know, five minutes, whatever. You're going to read this text, or here's a question for you. Here's a prompt. So we give them something to begin with. And then what's going to happen is they're going to interact with it three different ways. And this is going to happen quickly. None of these edge protocols are meant to take a lot of time. We're talking, you know, 10, 15 minutes and you're moving on to the next thing. So you would give them a prompt or a text to read, and then they do three things. They sketch their response. They actually are going to, now we use the word sketch because we're not talking art here. <laughs> we're talking a sketch. Very quickly, they're going to visualize their understanding of that topic. Then they're going to, number two, explain that sketch to a peer. Now, that's what we can't do today. We're not, there's, we, we can't partner up. If you've got somebody next to you at home, great. That's fantastic. You can explain to them. We're going to have to skip that, but that is what would happen. And then after they explain it to a peer and they listen to their peer's explanation, then they write about their sketch. They do not write till the end. They have to visualize it. They have to explain it and then they can write their answer to it, all right? So it's one source, typically a Google slide that we're doing this on, explain by drawing, explain by writing. So we're basically doing multiple forms of, 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 uh, of addressing a topic, 
in one assignment. We're developing conceptual understanding and we're supporting explanatory writing. All right, so here's how it's gonna work. Basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna give you a prompt and we're gonna give you link a link to a Google slideshow. And uh, you could do a lot of things. You could push out a copy so everybody gets their own copy. It could be everybody's inside of one slideshow for the whole class. Um, just to depend on what works best for you. And then on one side of the slide, the students are going to sketch their answer, their their, uh, their response. Then they're going to talk to their partner. Then on the other side, they're going to write about what they sketched. Now, when it comes to sketching, you could do it so many ways. You can just use the tools right inside of Google Slides, or you could jump out to AutoDraw or Chrome Canvas and then import that in. A lot of possibilities there. When it's all done, typically then, we would run through the entire slideshow as a gallery walk or a quick presentation up on the screen so that everybody in the class gets to see really fast everybody's take on this concept. So not only are they processing the idea, but now they get to see real quick 25 or 30 other opinions on that. It's a fantastic way to take a concept and really dive into it. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's, oh, here's some examples. These are not from me. Another teacher was kind enough to share. So some they were sketching and telling about socialism and communism and fascism. So there's a quick example. The point of me showing these is that these are very simple sketches. We're not worried about this being something that is uh, highly artistic. All right. So let's try this out today. So if you scroll on down in the agenda, uh, you're going to see a couple of options here for uh, for doing this. Um, I, we've got too many people here today to fit everybody in. So what I've done is I've got three groups. So if you want to collaborate with other people in the same slideshow, go ahead and click on group one or group two or group three. If you want to try this today, but you're like, nah, I don't want to be in the slideshow with other people, just click individual option and that will make a copy of the slideshow for you. So you You'll be all alone in it, totally fine. That way you can still participate and try it. But if you want to rub shoulders with other people, uh, group one, two, and three, those links will actually get you into a um, a, uh, a shared slideshow that everybody can uh, can test out. So I'll leave it up to you to decide uh, how how you want to uh, to participate in there. And again, this is all in the agenda document, which is at bit.ly slash Kurtz dash active. So if you're in that document and you scroll down to the sketch and tell section on page three, that's where you'll see group one, group two, and group three, if you want to be collaborative or individual, if you just want to do it on your own. So let's take a look at what's going to happen here. So I'm going to jump into the group one. Uh, and here's the idea. We have um, on slide two, our prompt. So our prompt is what is a goal you have for yourself this year, either professionally or personally? So that's the prompt. Think about something you want to accomplish this year, either in your professional life or in your personal life. Now, what you want to do is you want to pick a slide that nobody's on. So I'm just going to grab slide 10. I'm going to claim that slide. Uh, so you can easily look and see if there's somebody on a slide, if their little icon shows up there. So I'm going to grab a slide that's all my own here. And I'm going to sketch my response to this question. So for me, my goal for this year is to get to inbox zero, basically to be able to actually answer everything or manage my inbox, my, my Gmail inbox. It is still uh, unmanaged <laughs> at the moment. I'm having a hard time uh, keeping up with all the emails as they come in. So I want to sketch something that indicates that I am reaching inbox zero. So again, I'm on slide 10. So that's the one I'm going to use. Now to do this, I'm just going to use the uh, drawing tools that are inside of Google Slides. So how would you do that? Well, what you could do is we could go to the insert menu and from the insert menu, you can draw a couple of ways. You can go to the line option there. And from the line option, there is uh, an option called scribble. So if you just literally want to scribble, you can go insert line and then scribble. And then I could say, okay, I'm going to draw uh, a uh, an example of a 
of a letter. I'll have to oops, make this be like a be like an envelope here. Let's say I'm trying to uh, draw a, a, an envelope. So we'll we'll try that again. Sorry about that. There we go. So let's say this is my 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 version of a of a letter. So that's my email. Uh, and then I, I want to say that I basically have an empty inbox. Like there's there's no more email in my inbox. So I could keep just using that insert line scribble, or you could also use insert shape. If you prefer to use shapes, you could go insert shape and there's tons of shapes. Like maybe I could make a mailbox out of the shapes here. There's shapes and arrows and all kinds of stuff. So maybe I would come here and say, hey, let's let's make a mailbox. Let's just grab the, the rectangle and I'll make the post of the mailbox. And then I'll go uh, insert uh, shape and I'll find something that looks like uh, the top of a mailbox here that looks kind of like the top of a mailbox. And then maybe I will uh, insert another shape here that is similar to that, that will make it look like the opening of the mailbox there. And maybe I'll color that in black. And that way it kind of looks like it's empty. And then I can even put a flag on the mailbox if I want. Sure, I could say insert shape and I could find a shape that looks kind of like a uh, a flag. I'm sure there's something here I could use. Maybe uh, this guy here, I'll just have to rotate it. So we'll rotate it around so it looks like it's a flag and we'll color that in uh, red as well. Now, again, we're just trying to keep this simple. It is not meant to be some amazing artistic creation. It's bit to be fast. We're only giving students a few minutes. We want them, though, to be processing either the text they read or they are thinking of the prompt you gave them and they're visualizing it. They're creating something that's a visual representation of that. Okay. So again, if you want to try this out, you've got two options. Either you can jump in one of the collaborative groups, group one, two, or three. That way you can see other people in there with you. Uh, or you can click individual if you just want to get a copy and try it out yourself. Okay. Now, normally we would spend a little bit of time, not a bunch, but a little bit of time uh, letting people take some time to do part one, which is sketching. Um, once that's done, uh, we would now move on to part two, which is tell a partner about your sketch. Unfortunately, I don't think we can really do that today. Now, if somebody wants, feel free to throw in the chat. You, you could do that. You could tell us in the chat what it was you drew. That's totally fine. Uh, but again, a little difficult today for us to turn to a partner. Now, if you're at home, you can turn to somebody next to you and you can tell them about your sketch. That's fine. But if you want to throw it in the chat and let us know what you did, that is fine. So I would at this point turn to my partner and say, hey, here's what I I drew. I my goal this year is to get to inbox zero. I, I want to answer. I want to clean out my my Gmail inbox. So uh, this represents my email, and this is an empty uh, uh, mailbox. There's nothing in there. That's the goal. That's what I want to get to. Um, after you tell a partner and you listen to a partner, you hear their take on this prompt or this uh, text that everybody read. That's when finally we write. And all you have to do is just come over here and just double click where it says write. Just double click in there. And now you could type in there. You could say my goal for the year is to manage my Gmail inbox. Uh, and I could go into you know much more detail about that. But this is now where we actually finally formalize our thoughts into words. But we've, we've, we drew it first. We talked about it second, then we write it at the end. So at this point, what we would typically then do as a class is we would run through the whole slideshow. I'd say, okay, guys, everybody's done. Everybody drew, everybody talked, everybody wrote. Let's go down through now. I mean, so it could have been a question like, you know, after you read this article, you know, how would you summarize the key points of the article? Or how would you explain photosynthesis? Or how would you, whatever the topic is, well, now we get to see 25 answers. Now, I know we don't have all 25 done here today, but, you know, here we have somebody um, who is uh, wanting to buy, buy a, uh, uh, looks like they're wanting to buy a, uh, something, a, a house, maybe a fourplex. They want to buy a fourplex. That's great. <laughs> we got somebody who wants to learn about chat GPT. Somebody who wants a cat, maybe? <laughs> Better work-life balance. That's great. Um, let's see if we got any other ones here. Ah, work, work and family balance. I love that. 
Um, somebody wants to eat 12 pizzas, maybe? No, I'm not, I'm not sure. Uh, I think that's time. That's probably going to be time there. Uh, to have an organized classroom, I love that. That's fantastic. So thank you for those who are kind enough to play along here. That is, that is very, very, very good. Uh, so basically now you're getting the whole entire class is getting to hear 25 or 30 different opinions on what the text that was read or the prompt that was given or the problem that was stated. Awesome, awesome way. And again, very fast, very quick. We can run through those. All right. So let's pause there for a moment. That's a quick overview of what Sketch and Tell is like. So um, we're going to take a look at <clears throat> the next one, which is the tier list uh, edge protocol. Now, this is one that is pretty new. Uh, it's one that I developed uh, while I was learning <laughs> about edge protocols. Um, and so this is my contribution to the edge protocol world. So what is a tier list activity? So this is a high engagement student activity. It's going to focus on critical thinking, communication, comparing, contrasting, prioritizing, and defending your rationale. You can use this at any subject or grade level, and it can be done in 15 to 30 minutes uh, all throughout the year as many times as you might like to use it. Now, what is a tier list? Okay, so this is an activity where students are going to rank items based on how well they meet a criteria or a prompt. Um, now, you see the picture of the tier list in the background here, and you may wonder right away, I get this question every time, why is there an S on the tier list? So you can see here's A, B, C, D, E, and F, which we all certainly understand as like grade levels. But then there's this S up there. Well, this concept is not something I came up with. This has been around for years and years and years. This is the tier list was originally developed in the video game culture. And what people would do is they would rank video game characters or they would rank in-game items you can find, or they would rank, you know, games themselves. And they would make YouTube videos where they would go in and they would rank these video game items. And it turns out the S, it's actually from a Japanese word that means like excellent or superior. And so there's a, a certain a lot of folks who are playing games that you know come from Japan as well, and so that that integrated into the whole uh, concept of this, and so S tier is basically the best you can get. So it's above A tier. S tier is superior. It's the absolute best. So I remember watching these videos. I would see on YouTube every now and then. You could, you can, if you go on YouTube and just type in tier list, you're gonna find loads of videos where people are ranking not just video games anymore. People rank anything. I mean, any anything you can imagine, somebody has made a tier list. And so I would watch these videos. And I'm like, this is really cool. They're basically dragging and dropping pictures or text and dropping it into these different categories. But what I loved is they were defending their rationale. I remember watching one where somebody was, you know, ranking uh, books that they had read that year or ranking books from a different author. And they had to go through and explain as they're, why am I putting it on A tier? Why am I putting it on D? And I thought, this is a really educational process. You are comparing, contrasting, you're ranking, <clears throat> you're prior prioritizing, you're defending your rationale. So I said, let's make this an edu protocol. Let's make this something we can do in our class. Okay. So Here's the way it works. It is a three-part activity. So part one is that students are given a prompt. They are given a slide deck that contains the items they're going to rank. They're given a slide that has the tier on it, and they basically rank the items. They literally drag and drop the items to put them on their tier list. Now, this is quick. We're talking five minutes max. You know, it could be less than that, perhaps, but we're just getting them to rank their items. Um, now, there, these prompts could be all kinds of things. It could be like, best energy sources, most influential battles of the Revolutionary War, characters in a story who have the most impact on the plot, most important paintings of the 20th century, which animal is the best predator, what is the best adjective to describe a concept, a person, a place, a thing, an event, a character, what's the best graph to represent a set of data, what's your favorite position to play in a sport, you know, uh, what is the best adapted animals to live in a certain habitat, there are so you could really any grade level, any topic, this could be the case. So like, you know, here's an example where we've got different 
forms of fuel, you know, which, which, you know, if we were to rank these, these different sources of, of, of fuel, which would be, you know, the best or which is the most abundant or which is the most eco-friendly, you could have different reasons for how they rank them or which battles from the war <clears throat> were the most influential on the war or which characters from, from Romeo and Juliet had the most impact on the plot or which paintings from the 20th century were the most influential paintings. So that's what happens first. So literally you drag and drop, you put these into uh, the order that you uh, would rank them. Now they don't all have to be on a, um, on a different line. You can have multiple items that are tied. So it's okay to have multiple things on the same line. And you can also skip a line. If there's like, you don't have anything for the B tier, that's fine. You don't have to. You just basically have to use all the items somewhere. All right. That's part one. Part two is partner discussion. Now, again, today, probably not going to be able to do that, unfortunately, but this is a really engaging part. I love to watch this. Anytime I've done this, this is such a fun part of the activity. Basically, a student will now get together with a partner and they compare their rankings. Well, there's no way that two people will have exactly the same ranking. Something's going to be different. And so what they need to do is they find one item that they disagree on. And now they have to defend their rationale to their partner. Now, they don't have to pick the same item. Like I could have something that I put on A tier that they put on F tier and I want to defend my A tier. The other person may have something that they put down on E that I put on S and they're like, no way it's not, shouldn't be up there. And so they would defend why it should be down on E. But the point is you pick one thing and you try to pick something that's maybe as different as possible and state your case, explain why you think that's the case. Now, if you change somebody's mind, fine, you can still make some changes, that's okay. But basically that's what's happening here is each student, they're looking at their, their different ones saying, hey, I've got Chipotle at S and you've got Chipotle at E, we're gonna have a discussion about why <laughs> that is that. Okay, good stuff. Then that brings part three. So we did individual, we did partner, and now it's class discussion. So the last part of this is class discussion. So the final thing is each student submits their rankings through a Google form. So there's a link at the end of the slideshow where they submit their rankings through a Google form. And now the teacher displays those results up in front of the class, and we get to see the overall rankings from the entire class. We now go through each item no more than a minute or two per item. And we give the class a final chance to speak for or against these overall rankings. So now we can have a class discussion if somebody feels strongly about one of the final rankings that came out. So basically what's gonna happen is you're going to get, you know, from this Google form, we're now going to get a bar graph showing all the results. So let's try this out. Now, again, it's not gonna be exactly perfect today. We're gonna have to, kind of modify this since we're doing this through a Zoom, but let's try it out anyway. So in our agenda document, which again, if, if you lose track of the agenda document, it's bit.ly slash Kurtz dash active. I can put that full, the bigger version up there if that helps you see it, bit.ly slash Kurtz dash active. So if you scroll on down to the section for tier list, so, and get down to page four, Actually, page five, it carries over onto page five. So at uh, the top of page five, you will see a link that says tier list activity, Google slide link. Click on that link. It's highlighted in green, top of page five. Give a click on that link and it will make a copy for you. So everybody gets their own slideshow to start with. So you're not inside of this with anybody else. You've got your own slideshow. And what you're gonna see in the slideshow is on slide two, what it is you're ranking. Now, today we're just going to keep it light and fun. So we're ranking best fast food restaurants. And honestly, I would encourage you do this the first time you do the activity. Do something low stakes. Don't do something that's a real serious topic or something that's highly academic. What you want the first time you do this is to teach the students how the activity works. Once they've done it once, they know how it works. Next time, introduce your academic content. And the thing is, you can just hit the ground running. You don't have to spend time, you know, explaining how it works. Oh, we're doing a tier list. Everybody knows what they're doing and boom, you're right into it. So for today, 
what you guys are going to rank are fast food restaurants. So on the third slide, you'll see these icons and you can just drag and drop these icons over to where you want them to be. And I'm not claiming that this is, you know, actually my opinions. I'm just, I'm just dragging these over just so that I've got, you know, something, you know, in here. Uh, so we're just, we're just moving these around here, uh, putting them in, putting them in some spots. Uh, again, I'm not claiming that these are actually what what my my, my feelings are on those, uh, but that's what you would do. So take a minute uh, and, and and do this yourself. Kind of think through why would you put one above the other? You know why why would you rank them the way you do? Take some time and drag those around to put them into uh, into uh, the order that you would do. Um, all right, good stuff. So once that part is done. So the next thing then is we would uh, get together with a partner. Now, again, we can't we can't do that right now. But hey, if you have if you do have somebody next to you at home, feel free to explain to them, you know, why you ranked it the way you did. But normally that's what would happen. We're going to skip over that part. But this again, I love that part. It's so neat to see a room come to life with students are debating and discussing. And it's just so engaging to see them uh, during this section of the activity. All right. So that would then bring us to the third part, which is to um uh, submit our final rankings. And so you can do this. This we can do. So once you've done, once you have looked at your, your list and you've moved your items, please do the final thing, which is on the fourth slide, you'll see a Google form link. Go ahead and give a click on that. And that's going to open up this Google form. And basically what you're going to do is go down and check a box for each of these, uh, as far as how you did your final ranking. So if you said, well, when I did Burger King, I put that at a B, you know, so then I would check B for Burger King and Chick-fil-A, I put that at an A list. So I would click A, you get the idea. So go down, fill in your final uh, votes and go ahead and hit submit. And what that's going to do is it's going to send all of that into our Google form here. So I'm going to keep an eye on the form. I will not show the responses yet. I'll give you guys some time to do this. Uh, but what's going to happen is I will then show the responses tab and we'll be able to see how you guys voted as an entire group. So uh, again, I'll give you just a little bit of time because I want to make sure people have time to uh, address that. So while that's happening, because I want to make sure you have time to do that, um, I'm going to do a couple of quick things. Uh, first of all, I want to remind you that everything I'm sharing is all in this shared document, including, for example, um, on the tier list, a blog post that I did where I go into great detail explaining how it works, a uh, tutorial video you can watch that walks you through the whole process, and then also templates you can use. If you don't want to create this from scratch, please don't. <laughs> you can just come here to the bottom of page four, click on my Google Slides link. That'll make a copy of the Google Slides template and a Google Form link to make a copy of the form uh, that you'll use at the end. Now, you would just go through and modify this. You would put in your own prompt. You would put in your own text or pictures or whatever it is you want them to rank. And it can just be text. You know, like I said, it does. this does not have to be, um, if we go back to... Um, our tier list example here. Uh, remember, it doesn't have to be pictures. Like I showed you, this this is just text boxes when we're ranking the different characters, you know, in the play, and we're saying who has the most uh, impact. Those are just text boxes, so it doesn't have to be images. It, it can just be text boxes. Um, but all of those templates are available for you there, so you can make copies and uh, modify them for your class. All right, good stuff. All right, so last phase then is class discussion. So after people have taken the time to fill out their final answers, what I would do as the teacher now, I'll zoom in a bit so you can see this better, is I would go to the form and I go to the responses tab. And now we would go down one at a time and say, okay, so here we go. Here's here's Burger King. Looks like overall we're coming up with an F tier for Burger King. And I say, does anybody in the class want to speak for or against this? And again, we're only taking a minute or two. This whole activity can be done in 15 to 20 to 30 minutes. This is not meant to take up an entire class period. You're still going to move on with additional learning after this. Um, but 
Uh, and today, if if somebody wants to, again, feel free to use the chat. If you want to speak to why this is correct for Burger King, or if you are one of the S tier people and you're like, oh, uh, no, <laughs> that is not correct. Uh, you can you can throw it something in the chat. I'll give an example. When I did this with a, a group. Um, one of the participants said, you know what, I disagree with this because you know what, it turned out very similar. Burger King was getting mostly E's and F's. Somebody said, I would rank it, you know, at, at least an A, maybe an S because Burger King has plant-based options. And they go, that's one of the few restaurants where they knew they could get something plant-based and they thought that was worth it. That was a good point. Now I would rank Burger King higher just because I like their croissant, which is, I think they're the best breakfast sandwiches, but that's my opinion. See, that's the thing. It's my my opinion. But the point is we would now go down and see, oh, wow, Chick-fil-A, you know, it's coming out mostly S tier. Chipotle, pretty high in general. Duncan, ooh, coming in low for Duncan. McDonald's kind of all over the board there. Starbucks, we've got lovers and haters. See, this would be a really good discussion one. Say somebody from the class who's on S and somebody on F, let's hear your opinion. And so we can have a class discussion on that. Subway kind of just running down the middle there and Taco Bell seems to be uh, trending low and Wendy's uh, a little bit everywhere there as well. All right, very, very good, <laughs> excellent. So that is what the, um, that's what the tier list is all about. That is the idea behind how that activity works. If you've got any more questions or comments about that, let me know. But I think we have just enough time that we can probably squeeze in uh, one more thing, and that's the Iron Chef. I know we won't be able to complete it, but we can at least take a look at a third example of an edgy protocol. Okay, so for the final uh, edgy protocol that we're going to look at today uh, is Iron Chef. Now, what is this? This is a jigsaw activity. That's really what it is. If you've ever done a jigsaw, that's what Iron Chef is. The idea is that we are going to give students something to read. Hey, read this article. Um, or we're going to give them a topic to research. Hey, research this topic. And then they're going to divide it. It's going to be divided up among the students. So it could be that the students are working in a group of four, and each one of them takes a piece of it. You take this piece, you take this piece, you take this, you take that. Maybe it's different parts of the article. Maybe it's different um, uh, questions related to the research topic. But the point is, they're going to take their assigned piece of the jigsaw puzzle, and they are going to read, synthesize, create, they're going to uh, uh, learn about that topic, and they're going to put their, their ideas into the slideshow. Then, we're going to go through and have the entire class uh, present, you know, each group one at a time. And so students are not only going to learn about a topic themselves, they're going to now share it with others. And now they're going to hear from the entire class different perspectives on that same idea. So by the time it's done, they have thoroughly dissected and explained this idea. And if there's a mistake, if somebody says something incorrect, you as the teacher, you're guiding that. That's where you interject and say, well, hey, let me give a little course correction here and you can explain something. That's where the direct instruction comes in. But mostly the students are doing this. So it's going to be one source. They're going to add just an image and some facts onto a slide and they've got like 10 minutes to do it. Now, why is it Iron Chef? Well, if you've ever watched the Iron Chef show, the idea was that you'd be cooking, they'd be challenged to cook a meal and they'd have, you know, pretty normal ingredients, but then they'd always throw in a special ingredient. Like, ah, you, I've got to add that. I've got to somehow put, you know, licorice <laughs> into my meal. How's that going to happen? Well, the same thing is true here. In addition to, uh, putting in an image and facts about their topic, there's always a secret ingredient, something extra that they have to work in that can just make it fun. Okay, so what are we doing? We are learning content in a student guided model. We're working in teams and we're practicing our presentation skills. Basically put the kids into groups, give them access to the slide deck. Each one of them edits one slide, or alternatively, the group could collaborate on a slide as well. Uh, students are going to be provided with the resources they need. They're going to come up with a couple of facts. They're going to add a picture, and they're going to answer the secret ingredient. 
10 minutes, keep it quick, then each team presents their slide in a minute or two. All right, so this is what it might look like. Um, for my example, I chose uh, weird animals, I think is what I chose for mine. So if you wanna try this out, scroll on down. Let's, uh, oops, let me zoom back out here. Scroll on down to the section for Iron Chef. So this is page uh, five and six. So at the very bottom of page five, Top of page six, here's my hands-on demo. Feel free to give a click on that and that will make a copy for you. Now, normally we would be doing this in groups. Today you're doing it alone, but normally we would be dividing up into groups because we're gonna jigsaw the content between everybody in our group. But this is an example of what it would look like. So in this case, um, on slide two, we have our topic, weird animals, and a spot for chefs. So the students would come here and they would type in their names. So we would know who is who are the chefs in this Iron Chef slideshow. And then here are the different weird animals. We've got axolotl, mantis shrimp, naked mole rat, and platypus. Now, if you look down in the speaker notes section uh, below these, uh, I have included the, the links for them to do the research. You could put these links anywhere, but that's a good place to drop them. And so down in the speaker notes underneath the slide are links the students can use to do their research. So I've got the axolotl. Okay, so I come down here and I click on these links and that opens up one page on axolotls and another page on axolotls. And now my job is to read. So I got 10 minutes. I need to become the axolotl expert. And so I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna read all about the axolotl here as fast as I can, try to get key information. And then after I've done that, my job is to put any images of axolotls here, key information or details here, and then the special ingredient. Okay, so for mine, here's what I said. If a superhero was named after this animal, what would their power be? So it's fun, that's a fun thing, but it's also educationally viable because we're saying, do you know enough about the special details of that animal that you could think, what would its power be? You know, so like an axolotl, uh, it could be, uh, can stay forever young. Like you may not have known that, but axolotls, uh, if they choose to, they they don't have to turn into an adult. They can stay that young axolotl their entire lives. They look kind of like this. They're all cute. That's the young version. They do not have to grow up if they choose not to do so. Uh, but anyway, the point is I'm going to add pictures of axolotls here, and then I'm going to bullet point out the key things I learned about the axolotl there. And then that's it. We're now going to share. Uh, and again, this is where the full class discussion comes in. We say, okay, group one, you're up. And group one will go through and they'll share their, <clears throat> here's my pictures, here's my key information, here's my answer. And boom, 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 group one will share, then group two, group three, group four. And as we do that, the students will be learning this cons these, these ideas by their own research, but also getting different perspectives from everybody across the class. All right. And so those are three quick examples of edu protocols, Iron Chef, Tier List, and Sketch and Tell. There are so many others out there and so many other great resources. Again, definitely encourage you to join the Facebook group. Great group of folks to be able to connect with there and learn more. And everything that we covered in here, again, at bit.ly slash Kurtz dash active. Uh, I'll go ahead and turn it back over to you guys for your wrap up things and see if there's any questions or anything I still need to address. But thanks so much for playing along with me here.